So here we are, beginning of October. So I suppose this is me autumn plot. I've cut the hedge. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put a surfer in there or not. It's supposed to look like a wave. Surfer or a kayaker, I don't know. My hanging baskets, they suffered a little bit through the summer with um, holidays and so on. Um, but they've hung in there, look. They've hung in there. Then the basket, the, the, this basket here um, and the small one underneath too is looking a little bit sad. But pff, And so are the dahlias. I think we've got, um, I think the snails have managed to find their way up in amongst that lot. But there we go. Uh, that's life, isn't it? Um, these strawberries are still giving me strawberries. I'm well chuffed with those. They're called custard and no, just add cream. Now, me, this me cold frame was really successful. I've just stuck a few um, radishes in there, but this was really successful. All finished now. That's all ready to be dug out, and I've just got a few um, sunflowers in there um, drying out. Then. Um, the hanging baskets and pots that I've got around here for colour, much the same, all suffered with having been having dried out. It's been a super dry summer and there's nothing in inside there apart from I've got me strawberries. Strawberries? What am I talking about? I've got my squash um, and pumpkins and stuff like that drying out and garlics and that. But most of it's all gone home now. So let's have a little squidge right round. Um, in the greenhouse, oh, these peppers have been unbelievable this year. Look at them, they're still coming on. So um, I've got to find ways of preserving these, um, several ways with in oil or just freezing. And the tomato plants, even though earlier in the year they weren't very successful, but they seem to have rejuvenated. So I'm just going to keep them going until, until they've, till they've had enough. And there's one of me pumpkins in there, to, just drying out. So uh, the green eggs has been absolutely superb. Everything, whether they were in pots or whether they were in the border, have successfully given me oh tremendous, tremendous peppers. Then the 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 the, the grow beds. Um, then once again. <laughs> The uh, spinach has gone mad, look. Then I've got here, these are my plants for next year. Um, the um, cabbage and um, cauliflowers and broccolis, which will stand right the way through until next year, you know, next April. Then, then the rest of all this now, it all just needs digging. I'll put a couple of pots of peppers outside purely because they were filling up in the green age. And they're equally done just as well outside as inside. I mean, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 11, there's 12 peppers on that one plant. I mean, dahlias here have been absolutely superb. I really like this little one, but I haven't been deadheading, mostly because I've been so busy, um, you know, with all of these, like you do. Um, anyway. So they've been great there, and I'm going to redo that again next year. The strawberry bed, remember, uh, I strimmed them all off, um, and then they've all sprouted again, and they're all looking good. And where there's been gaps, I've put in a couple of um, the ones that, that have been runners. Um, and then really, I'm thinking now hey, this could be the last year for this this bed, but we'll see. Then the beetroot, they have been tremendous. Um, and they're still coming on, they're still giving really good beetroots. Look at those, look at that, isn't that lovely? Um, so I'm, I'm picking these regularly, and the carrots, they've been tremendous as well, um, even though they've started to get some of them, the ones with the little white leaves, that if you look right down in the top of them, you know, top of the carrot, little um, blue aphids. Now, wherever that is carrot fly, I'm not sure, but they've got it, so. Um, and then me parsnips, I haven't actually pulled any yet. I'm waiting for 
Ah, there they are, they look good. I'm waiting for a frost and then, then leeks. Remember the leeks had rust, so I cut them all off. And what's happened with some of them, where they were cut off, I've got three, several leeks have come. So it looks like I've got a bonus. Then I've got me later beetroot. They're looking good as well. Then the carrots I had sort of set the carrots. The tomatoes I've had semi inside outside, so to speak. They're in a protected frame. Once again, they've been tremendous as well. Um, even though their watering's not been that regular, they've still managed. And I think it's purely because um, their roots just go on down and they find water. Then my sweet potatoes, not quite sure when I'm supposed to be digging these, but as you can see, they've just absolutely taken over. Then this grapevine didn't have any grapes on it at all. I'm going to do an experiment and I'm gonna graft into the rootstock of that one. It should have been a Bacchus, but it's, if it works, it won't be Bacchus. It'll be, uh, it'll be Chardonnay. If not, it won't be anything at all, it'll be gone. And then, and then here, this one, um, I've just left a couple of bunches on for the, for the birds, um, and they, they've ignored them. And if they don't eat them soon, then I will. And then that, that was that one, um, the uh, broccoli that I put in earlier in the year. Now I did sow some peas here, um, and out of all of them, they've just come up scratchy. That I don't know what happened. There was no sign that mice had dug them up or they'd rotted off. It, it's really strange. Anyway, that's the way it is. Then, oh, I've put some wire in the way. I've got a fox here again, and he's pooing on my grain. The um, asparagus, I've just let that go now to, um, to put its nutrients down into the roots, and that's doing really well. Then right at this end, I did have a blueberry at this end. Um, I'm going to swap that now. It died off. I think it got rain watered and stuff. Um, and then the, remember the melons? Well, I picked a really nice melon out of there uh, yesterday, and there's just two small ones down there. But I think that's had it now. So, oh, and there's the there's one blueberry that has has su successfully. Um, continues and I've, I've put the, the dregs of the grapes around it. So those potatoes have all been dug as you can see so we'll go along. Let's go back to the other side without making you too dizzy with a wobbly camera. So these grapes have all been picked. The black currants they were they were okay on that bush but that is it's only its first year, so I didn't expect too much. Then this is my main crop, these are Sapamara. Not, I haven't dug these yet, as you can see. If I had dug them, they wouldn't be there, would they? Um, then my bee friendly flowers, they're still coming on, look. And I took, tongue in cheek, I sowed, um, last month, I sowed a, um, a courgette, a pair of courgettes, look and they're coming on and I'll put this bit of plastic rain in the oak that I might still get a late cause yet. French beans I've left to go to seed and um, so this bed is almost done with now but I did put in a lake sowing of leeks um, really it was tongue in cheek in case the leeks that I had didn't come too much but they look like they've survived um, so I may, I, may, I may plant them out and then I'll put a tongue in cheek French beans in and I sowed another row of peas that was last month they didn't come up either so there's something not quite not quite right then um, that I've got some cauliflowers here which may head this year um, but if they don't that be that be for next year and the same with um, a red cabbage um, and I did that was supposed to be a red cabbage and it turned into something else. I was convinced it was red cabbage. It may be that I simply didn't label it right. On the other hand, it may have been the seeds weren't right because I thought I was careful this year. 
um, and then I've got a really nice broccoli coming on there and then this space over the back there is where the cauliflower is going to go for next next year the pumpkins are all done there's a few there that need picking up um, as were the sweet corn sweet corn this year were absolutely tremendous and anyway, I was so chuffed and the squash there's still a couple of squash but I can't see them coming to anything they the actual plants are, are almost non-existent so there we go let's um let's go back along let's go back round along the path then the oh the marrows was where those two courgettes are and then there were courgettes here this one seems to have a, a new lease of life in fact there's a just down there is a flower whether it comes with I don't know then in this raised bed I've sown some lettuce so that I can put a lid over the top of this if we get frost um, and then the pond's a bit low on water so I've put a bit of plastic down to help to fill it up again oh and we've got one squash still needs picking over the back there then the grapevines here absolutely tremendous and that's that noisy old blinking truck backing down here. Look, the speed is going up. Still, I want it done. They're covering my plot with dust, and I'm not happy. There, and look at that. I know I'm going to pick these grapes later. I'm going to take some photographs of them and pick them. Apple tree and the peach tree and the pear tree, all gone. They're all picked. Most of the apples and a great deal of the pears had um, maggots. So there's the plot. There's all the noise from the works going on. There's the plot. Oh, quick squidge at the bees. Now we've lost a beehive. I'm not sure why we lost it. Um, regularly the beehive was covered in dust and there's been a hell of a lot of noise. I don't know. Um, but that one there is very successful. The bees all, the honey's been collected and and jarred up. I think we had 20 kilos um, from the two. So there we go. There's the plot. I'll see you all. Oh, probably next month when this should look a bit tidy. It's um, well, don't look too bad. It's how it's not supposed to be. I just realised. I've lost the enemy scarecrow. See you all later. Bye.